how it began. So if, if you've watched the first video of the Weekend Hillbilly and uh, kind of wanted to know what the, the back story is, uh, this is it. So this is kind of the prequel to everything. Um, in, in 2018, my mother would pass away. And shortly thereafter, in, in 2019, my, my dad would pass away too. All right, you video. Is that video in it? Yeah, we can video. All right. You can you can match the kill switch and everything? Yeah. You ready? great until it wasn't and just like that we uh we, we lost our dad uh he he had passed away the that night uh just after we'd worked on the car all day got the car up and running and uh then the next morning he, he passed away sometime over the over the in the course of the night um in the following months to come, uh, my wife and I would take possession of a family cabin that we built uh, when I was a child growing up. My brother and I, along with my mom and dad, we, we built a nice little cabin on 11 acres of property. And uh, slowly we would begin to, to uh, take care of the cabin and, and work on it and uh, do a lot of the maintenance, the preventive maintenance, a lot of the groundskeeping and whatnot, my wife and I. My wife is a really big help and really instrumental in, uh, in doing a lot, helping me do a lot of the work. Um, you know, over in the, in the past year or over the course of the past year or so, my dad had a lot of obligations. And as such, you know, the time just didn't allow the maintenance of the property. Our, our neighbor really helped out a lot and would cut the grass and come and cut the grass. But, you know, shrubbery and things like that had slowly become overgrown and, and a little snaky like and and so my wife and I would jump in and and do a lot of the the clearing of the shrubs and begin to kind of dress everything up and and take care of everything and and slowly but surely just kind of uh make it ours in in a way that that remembered our parents and remembered uh you know all the things that we had growing up and what mom and dad put into the place so very you know very nice of them to leave such a a gracious gift to us growing up We'd also begin to clean out uh, over the course of, you know, 30 or 40 years. You know, it's amazing what kind of stuff you gather up, just uh, all kinds of, you know, a lot of books, a lot of stuff that, you know, hey, I think I'll keep this. I need to keep this. We'll use this one day. And, and you know, over time, things like that just begin to build up. And and it hurts your heart to, to have to throw away things like this. But, you know, at the end of the day, it you just got to do it. So we began to clean up. And throw a lot of things away and and uh you know out of the cabin out of the basement it's like i said it's amazing what you'll gather up uh the barn we have uh, i have a huge barn growing up we 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 put um uh, about a 34 by 34 barn two stories we'd planned on having horses in the in the bottom and and the hay in the top and and so over time it it become more of a a storage place uh you know we got rid of the horses and and you know grew out, grew out of horses and into mustangs and so uh the the bottom part of the barn becomes storage for a lot of cars a lot of car parts um and and just you know general storage a lot of a lot of lumber hey i think we'll use this lumber one day and it was amazing how much stuff we actually pulled out of the barn a lot of it you know it had unfortunately went bad uh, a lot of the lumber had went bad in the bottom part of the barn. Uh, the cars, you know, eventually had them scrapped out, used, kept the parts we could. Of course, we still love Mustangs. Uh, kept everything we could, burned a lot of the wood slowly, but, uh, you know, we just took over and, and uh, began to pull stuff out of the barn and, and just burn it and, and throw away what we could and burn what we could. And, and uh, one of the first pieces of equipment I bought would be a, 
1990, uh, 1920 Ford tractor and become very instrumental in, uh, in helping uh, prepare the property and uh, pull a lot of the stuff out of the barn and, and just help maintain the property around that, have that, uh, you know, and a finish mower and a, and a couple other pieces of equipment. We'd pull all the firewood out of the barn. Uh, you know, the gosh, the, the firewood had gotten so dry that it was just powder dry and you know, it didn't weigh hardly anything and it burned amazingly quick. Uh, amazing how quick it burned. Um, even the kids, you know, kind of jumped in and, and helped. We'd, we'd, you know, Mallory would learn to drive um, here on the property over the next couple of years and, and uh, starting to drive the golf cart and the Polaris and her and her. Her uh, cousin would help us out. They'd haul a lot of scrap wood out to the fire, and we'd burn it. Um, at the same time, we also had the, uh, the tree cut. Uh, we had um, a lot of the, the timber cut off the property. Dad had kind of set that in motion before he passed away, and, and we went ahead and let the, uh, the people go ahead and cut the timber on it, and we were left with a lot of brush and a lot of, a lot of debris to pick up and clean up and, and – over the course of the show, you'll see probably a, a lot of that is going to be the maintenance of the property, getting the, the brush and everything cleared up and, and trimmed up. And the other thing we would do to the property, we, you know, is like I said, a lot of it has to do with the maintenance. We, we would rent a high lift and, and uh, work around the barn, cutting the trees away from the barn, trying to get everything away from it, uh, keep the leaves off the roof. Uh, that way we don't have to replace it. Uh, get everything kind of trimmed up. Like I said, over the over 20, 30, 40 years, you know, everything's grown up around the barn, and and you know, it, it just needs everything. Just needs a good trimming and manicuring. Uh, my brother-in-law would help us, and we borrowed his tractor to begin with before I got mine, and and used his. We would use it to widen out the walkway up to the front porch of the cabin. Um, the other thing we would begin to do is my mother-in-law also jumped in, huge help. Um, we would we would need to go through all the logs on the cabin and and caulk all the seams. Uh, you know, twenty, thirty, like I said, all these years uh, added up, and and uh, the logs really needed to be maintained. So we caulked all the joints, all the seams, and uh, gave it a good pressure washing, and then gave it a good uh, treatment with uh, this. Uh, Q8 log oil and, um, you know, just kind of brought everything back to life. It's amazing the, the, the amount of color that it added to, uh, to the logs. It really made it look brand new in a way. And uh, the oil will definitely help preserve, uh, preserve the wood and, uh, and, and make it last a lot longer, hopefully last into my, my daughter's lifetime. So, yeah, we, we use the Q8 log oil and uh, gave the, the logs a good treating uh, twice over the course of the year. Uh, got everything kind of cleaned up and looking. It's amazing the, the amount of color it added back to the logs. Uh, gosh, it just made them look, look like what I remember growing up uh, when we were younger. So we would do that. And then uh, one of the things we also did is, is, you know, we took the tractor, like I said, and widened out the, the, the walkway up to the front of the porch here. And then we also kind of jumped in, and uh, we done away with the steps coming up to the front. The steps were kind of getting rotted out, and so we had some leftover Trex lumber from a from a, a deck project that we had built uh, down here at our house, uh, you know, in, in in Metro Atlanta. And so we would add that and, and built a little small eight by eight deck or landing uh, with a little ramp up to the the landing there. And uh, gosh, it really, it's amazing what it added to the property and, and how it made it look. Uh, what, a, what a big benefit it was. Just, just one of the few things that we started. And, and like I said, you know, slowly, you know, just trying to make it ours. We, you know, one of the next projects we worked on was a, was a set of steps down to the basement. Uh, you know, that was probably one of the things that, that over the years my mom always wanted and we had the worst set of steps, these little octagon or hexagon shaped concrete pads that were never put in the ground level and, and so I think this is a, the steps on the on the cabin there's a nice little thing that I think my mom would really like. And uh, so here it is kind of present day. Uh, and you got the steps and a little lean to over the basement and uh, just kinda of brought it, you know, up to to 
very current maintainable levels. Uh, still got a little bit left to do, but I hope you'll kind of follow along with us. And that's kind of the backstory of, of where I am and why I'm a weekend hillbilly. Uh, this is our project over the weekend, and we come up almost every weekend, work on the property, and and do what we can to preserve the memories that we have and try to make a few more. Uh, I hope you'll like and subscribe and, and just kind of follow along. And like I said, we'll, we'll make some memories and some mishaps. Thank you.